just want to take a moment to welcome you, and so good to have you. We have people on campus with us, and I want to take a moment just to welcome you guys. Thanks for joining us this morning, and it's so good to have a campus that is getting fuller. Amen? Who's excited about level one? Come on, Come on now. You know, um, just the other day, I uh, was coming into worship service, and I thought, you know what, there's a lot being canceled this year. We've canceled birthdays, we parties, we've canceled travel arrangements, we've canceled holidays, uh, we've canceled some weddings. But I want to tell you, there's nothing that can cancel the good news of the gospel. There's nothing that can cancel a singing church that lifts up the name that is above every other name. And so I don't know whether it's level three or level one, God hasn't changed. And even in a lockdown, we are still not knocked down. Amen? Okay, I'm just excited to meet today. And uh, hey, if you're gonna take a moment, thank you, worship team. Um, I wanna encourage you this morning just to open your word. I believe that God has a, has a word in season for us. And uh, last week, uh, Dill shared about uh, the wind and uh, his thoughts were, I love those thoughts and I feel like I wanna set, stay in that for a moment. And this thought around catching the wind. And what if there is a wind out there that you and I can catch? I love that song there, it says, hoist the sails, set the sails, because I think it's not that we don't see the wind blowing, it's that do we have the opportunity to catch it? And I really believe that there's a wind that blows and it blows through our lives and we have the opportunity to respond because of what Jesus did for you and I. Um, you know, I'm just reminded this morning, if you've come to church, I don't know what it feels like for you, but sometimes you arrive at church, it's like you've got to wait to warm up. You never felt like that before? You've got to get into the second song, and then you're like, am I right with God? You know, depending on what my weeks look like, maybe you arrived this morning and you had a little bit of a, in the car. <laughs> no, that's just me. Anyway, so whatever, it, I don't know what it looks like, but you feel like as you enter God's presence, you've got to work to get into God's presence. But I want to tell you, the truth is that God has something special for you this morning. It's not dependent on what, what your performance is. It's already been done at the cross that we can freely enter boldly into his throne room, into his presence this morning. And what if this morning he wants to speak to you? There's no barrier to the screen this morning. If you're sitting in your home this morning, on your own, shift your position because God wants to speak to you. You see, anytime we open our hearts and His power comes, He promises us that as we entered, we would never leave the same. Who wants to leave the change this morning? I don't know, I wanna leave change this morning because there's a wind that blows through the churches, not just through the world, through the church. I know about you, that's exciting. That means the church, where the church is, there is freshness. Where the church is, there is life. Look around you, tap your neighbor and say, mm, I see life in you this morning. I see life in you this morning. You know the fact the other day I was walking into Woolworths. Who loves Woolworths, yeah? Okay. You walk into Woolworths and it's the fruit section. You put an extra jacket on because they're polar bears there. It's so cold. But then you move through and you move through and you move through. Everything's beautiful. But it's the last section of Woolworths I like. It's that tunnel. It's that last 10 meters. They put everything on offer. You walk down there now, you, a parent, you know, if you've got a five-year-old, it's a problem. And I felt like this morning, you know what? God has so much on offer for us this morning. He has hope on offer. He has love on offer. He has courage on offer. He has His Word on offer. And you know what? The retailers have got it waxed. You know why? I thought they'd put it at level, you know, where you could grab it like this, but they put it down low. That means it's accessible for everyone. God's Word this morning is accessible to you. It's been made accessible because of what Jesus did. And so... I wanna read a scripture to you today. It's from Revelation chapter two, verse 17. And uh, it's this thought around the wind. Uh, give you some context. The apostle John is writing this letter and he's on the Isle of Patmos. He's imprisoned. And I thought for myself for a moment, it's amazing what God did through people who were locked down. Noah was locked down for 40 days. The people of Israel were locked down for 430 years and he sent one like the Messiah, Moses. Think about it for a moment. Jesus was locked down for two days. On Friday, he went to the cross and they locked him down, but death couldn't defeat him. Paul was locked down in Rome, locked down in Philippi, and yet he wrote some of the most powerful scriptures that had ever been written. John the beloved, the closest one to Jesus, locked down, but in lockdown, he produced something so powerful. What if in this lockdown season, God is doing something so powerful in your heart that it's gonna ricochet through the rest of your life? You know what I think every time we meet and every time we get together and you online listening this morning, you're in the campus and you're already signing up to book to come to church. You know what that means? Look, you might not feel like you're getting stronger, but every time you arrive, every time you pray, every time you worship, every time you open your word, you know what you're doing? You're getting stronger. We're getting stronger. Paul writes this, John writes this letter and I wanna read it to you. It's Revelation chapter two, verse 17. And he says these words, it's in the message version and Eugene Peterson writes it so beautifully. He says, are your ears awake? I mean, normally we look with our eyes, don't we? 
But are your ears awake? Are you listening? And he says, listen. And he says it twice. Listen to the wind words. The Spirit blowing through the churches. Isn't that beautiful? There's a wind that blows. Do you hear it? It's blowing right now through this earth. The wind never stops blowing. And he says, I will give the sacred manna to every conqueror. I'll also give you a clear, smooth stone inscribed with your new name, your secret new name. And here's the thought for today, and it's the title of my message if you're taking notes. It's called this, The Wind That Wins. The Wind That Wins. There is a wind blowing in the church right now. There is a wind that speaks to every single one of us. And I know, we know, we know that the wind blows, but do you know that the wind wants you to win? Do you know that the spirit that's blowing, he wants you to win? I don't know about you, but we all want to win, don't we? I mean, we have different interpretations of winners. We can hold a trophy, whatever. But God's idea for us is that we would grow up, be who he called us to be, make a difference on this earth, use our lives for his glory. You know what he wants to do? He wants you to win. Win as a husband, win as a father, win as a businessman, win as a, win, win. he wants you to win. That's what he does. I think sometimes when we, when we come up front with the gospel, we think, oh, they're the crispy Christians. Mm, shame. Are they gonna get through life? But God says, I put power inside of you. You know, Jesus, he knew that for his disciples. He said it wasn't enough to give his disciples another precept or principle. He realized in order for them to get out into the world, they needed power. They needed the wind in their lives, the wind to win, the wind to win. Paul won, don't you think? In prison, but he let out letters that would change our lives. Jesus locked down in death, but rose again. Death was defeated forever for you and I. The wind is blowing, are you listening? It's here, not for the world, for the church, for you sitting there right now. The wind is for you. Would you receive it this morning? Um, you know, recently I've moved to a farm and uh, I, I've, we're right next to our parents. Who, and uh, recently we had a couple of electricity outages. That's what happens here on the North Coast. <laughs> anyway, so, and, and we've had that and it went on for a little while. And then one evening, it was about five o'clock in the evening and my, my folks have got a little generator and uh, my dad came across, he said, Mark, would you like me to hook you up? I was like, well, that'd be great. Uh, we're nice to have some lights tonight. And anyway, he said, okay, just, just hang on. And he, and he got a big, uh, one of these extension cords. It was a big, thick blue one. And he, and he ran it through there. And his Jenny was already started. You could hear the noise in the background. And he pulled it through to our house. And he said, right, we've got to go to the DB board. And we go to the DB board. And I've never seen this DB board before. And he says, okay, we're going to switch off this. And we're going to switch off that aircon and that guy here and this guy here and that guy there and all this. And then we've got to go back to the main pole and switch that off. And then what you want to do is go and stand in your house and then put the plug in and then my dad off he went and he likes to talk quite loudly so he's trying to shout over the generator he's like Mark are you ready I'm like yes are you ready Mark and I'm like yes he says okay turn it on and I'm like okay turn it on boom and the next thing the lights came on little child like the children are cheering like oh dad there's lights the the TV's working and then I thought to myself you know what I don't have to understand all of the electricity to access the power. I don't have to understand all of the internet to access Google. I don't have to understand all that the Spirit is saying in order to access its power. I think sometimes we, we hang back because there's this wind that's blowing and we go like, ooh, I'm not sure what that looks like. You can't understand the supernatural, we never will till one day we get to heaven, but until that time, you access its power. Anybody wanna access the wind that God has for us here this morning? And He wants to give us that. Would you take hold of it with two hands? And so today I wanna try and put some flesh in what the wind looks like. What's the right wind that blows? Because when the wind blows, we wanna look, what's that wind that makes us wind? If you're taking notes, a couple of things I wanna give you this morning. And uh, the first one is this. The wind centers him and centers us. It centers him and centers us. Whenever the wind blows through your heart, there is one thing the Holy Spirit will always do. It will lift up Jesus. I want you to show you this for a moment. You, when, when, God, when, when Jesus went to Golgotha, guess where Jesus was? He was in the center between two murderers. When he went to the Last Supper, guess where he was? The Bible says he was in the midst of all his disciples. When he went and he saw them for the first time post-resurrection, he walked through the door. Supernatural, they locked the door, they're scared, disciples are shaking, they're so full of fear. The first thing, he doesn't come and say, hey guys, what were you thinking? He says, blessings, and he walks in. Guess where he, the Bible says? He was in the center. In Revelation, when John's writing it, and the whole of heaven is standing, all angels, the cloud of witnesses are looking up, and God says, who's gonna save the world? Guess who it was? The Lamb of God. And guess where he was? In the center. 
When the wind blows through your heart, Jesus will be magnified and put up in the center. He's the name above every other name. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's all things to all men. He is the one who saves and sets free. When the Spirit blows, I wanna tell you, in the midst of Link Church, there's one name that's gonna be magnified. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus, the one who saved us and set us free. When the wind blows in your life, there'll be nothing but Jesus on your lips. And I wanna tell you, he's in the middle of your marriage. He's in the middle of your business. He's in the middle of your pain. He's in the middle of your circumstance. He's in the middle. The wind's blowing and Jesus be centered. But you know what else he does for us? This this is grace. You know what he does for us? He centers us. Now, I don't know about you, but we live in a world that is fatally distracted. It's a bit like my internet browser. I've got 10 tabs open, three are frozen, and I've got music I don't know where to turn off. Isn't that true? We're just so distracted. We're like a little kid that walks into a big video shop. We don't know which one to go to first. We're like this. We're just doing this. And in a world, and you know what? Your enemy loves that. One of the things, the works of the enemy is to confuse you and to bring, it almost confused the way you walk. It confused your purpose. But you know when the wind blows, God wants to center you. When Jesus started his ministry, what's the first thing that God did? He said, no, just stay right there. You've been baptized, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you that you're my son and I love you. Before he moved, before he was sent, God said, I'm gonna center you. I wonder if in the world today, we so spend so much time seeking to understand what to do when God says, I want you to remind yourself of who you are. Because who you are has longevity, but what you do will only last a little while. And God wants to center you in this season. He wants to remind you that I'm a son and daughter of the living God, that I'm loved by Him, that I'm known by Him, that before I do anything, I am enough. I'm enough. What if God in this season is wanting to redefine our normal? I love how Alison Wonderland said, she said, let's not talk about yesterday because today I'm a new person. I'm a new person. Not because of what the world tells me, but because of who God told me I am. I'm centered because the wind's blowing in my heart. What if God's giving us a new, you know the, new, the word new normal is being bantered. That to navigate has just been overused. It's like, I'm navigating this, navigate, never, we're just navigating everything here. I don't know about, I've heard that. I don't, please don't give me another navigate, please. I'm just, I can't even see straight now. So anyway, it's like, we can navigate, but, but what, about, what about this new normal? You know, what if, hey, a, a big shout out to those who've moved on and said, I don't wanna be the same person I was in March. I don't wanna go back to normal. I don't wanna go back to what church was. Like. I wanna, I'm, I'm growing, I'm developing, I'm getting stronger. God has more things in store for us. This is what happens when the wind blows. You know, when I was 25, it was normal for me to have some hair. You know, I could put peroxide on my hair. It's like, Ey! but now that I'm 45, I'm just grateful for every hair in my head. But you, know, the reality is we change. What is physical is for us spiritual. It would be a tragedy for us to go back. Let's go back to 2008 when we used to sing this song. Hallelujah. No. God is moving in His church. There is more on the other side of us. He's making us stronger. He's growing us. He's centering you in who you are. Who you are is good enough. Can I ask you a question? Who am I today? Not who you are tomorrow, not who you were yesterday. Who am I today? When you answer that question, who you are is more important than what you do. And when the wind blows through the Spirit, You are good enough in God's eyes. You have more than you need to live this life in godliness. The second thing, if you're taking notes, what the wind does when it blows, the wind that wins, you know what it does? It creates. It creates. I love this thought. Think about the wind for a moment. You know, the wind blows. In fact, without the wind, this world would be a desert. The wind brings precipitation. The wind holds up the atmosphere. The wind disperses the pollen. The wind, without the wind, and it's true for us in our lives too, isn't it, physically? Think about it for a baby. When a baby's born, the first thing they look for is breath. When we die, the last thing we do is take a breath. In other words, the wind is important. You know why? The wind brings life. God inherently in who He is, He's born to create. He wants to bring something new in our lives. In in His heart, in scriptures around, Ezekiel talks about, He says, I'm giving you a new heart and a new spirit. The reality is when the wind blows, there's always something new on the horizon. The challenge with new is it's often unknown, and so it's pretty scary. I wanna ask you a question. What are you stepping into? What are you excited about for the future? What is God doing in you? I love the story of Noah. It says he was locked down in an ark for 40 days. 
and it says the waters dispersed and it says he sent out a dove, which is a picture of the spirit. And this dove came back with a little tiny little olive branch in its beak. And you know what the dove was doing? You know what it was doing? It was a picture of God bringing back something of something that is new out there. It was bringing Miranda that there's peace out there. There is nothing new out there. There is life out there. The, the, the spirit, when it's moving in the church, it's always reminding that there's something better coming. There's new life coming over you. There's new opportunities coming over you. There's new life in your word. There's new life. God, whenever the spirit blows, we can believe in something new. I like Elijah said to Elijah, look, there's a cloud on the horizon. God often comes. How do we know the wind's working in your life? Look for something small. What are the signs of the wind blowing and bringing creation in a church? What are some of the signs where God brings creation? You know what one of the signs is? Is hunger. Hunger for God's presence. I believe hunger is the landing strip of the Holy Spirit. Hunger, when you get hungry for the presence of God, I'm not talking about hungry for your next meal. I'm talking about getting in His presence. When you are hungry for Him, watch what God will do. You know what the other sign is? With something new, maybe God's stirring a hunger in you now. And you can feel it, but you haven't put words to it. Maybe there's this hunger to do more. Let the Spirit blow. You know what the second thing is? When people start to ask, what must I do? Do you remember in Acts, 3,000 people heard the gospel for the first time. And you know what their response was? Peter, what must we do? Do you know when God starts moving and the wind starts blowing in your life, you know what you're gonna start asking? What must I do, God? You've given me this gift. What must I do, God? Send me, God, I'm available. What must I do? When the wind blows, we're gonna answer the question, what must I do? The third sign of a new creativity in life, when God starts to birth the Spirit, you know what else happens? The church is mobilized. The church is mobilized. It's no longer just a pastor telling you this is what you need to do. No, it's me taking responsibility and going, you know what, who I am is good enough and I can get out there and make a difference in my business, in my school, wherever my feet may go, the church will be mobilized. You know why? Because His Spirit in me is stronger than that in the world and I can make a difference. We take responsibility. These are the signs of the Spirit moving in the church. It centers Him, it centers us and God creates something new. The third one is this, and I love this one. When the wind blows, it cleanses us. There is something beautiful about holiness, about purity. I think it's often given a bad rap. It's like, oh, holy, we don't know what that means, but there is something beautiful. Notice what he said in this word, when the wind blows, you will be a white stone. White is purity, stone is steadfastness. I'll give you a new name that's added. There's something beautiful about purity. The challenge for us is we don't know what that means. We, when we hear the word cleanse, we go, oh, what does that mean? Do I need a deep cleanse, a shallow cleanse? Or what kind of cleanse does that mean? You know, when we think of the word clean, we're like, hmm. And we often think, here's the challenge. When we see this and we think of purity, we think we need to clean ourselves. We've had a latest addition to our family. He's a Dalmatian cross whippet. And uh, he's, uh, she, sorry, she, she, her name's Honey. I wish I had a picture of her, but um, uh, she, she's a beautiful dog, a rescue dog. She's come to the family. She's made herself at home. She's amazing. Kids love her. Um, but she's picked up a bad habit. We have horses right nearby, and every now and then she ducks out the fence, and she goes and ru rubs herself in horse manure. And then she comes back in the house, and she wonders why she gets locked out. And you know, honey gives us that puzzled look standing outside, like, what have I done wrong? You see, honey doesn't know the difference. She doesn't know what she's done, and more importantly, she doesn't know how to clean herself. And that's what happens to you and I, isn't it true? I remember when James was a little boy, we used to wash him. Remember parents when you wash your, 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 your babies in the bath? And I would hold him on the back like this and Kath would do all the washing. How much washing did James do? Zero. He just kicked his legs and enjoyed the ride. And I think sometimes in life, it's the same for us. It reminds me of Jesus' words in Matthew 18. He says, for the kingdom of God for, is not for those who have it all worked out. It's for those who can't do anything for themselves. It's for those who can't clean themselves. And so the invitation of the wind word of the Spirit is to come to Him and get in the wind because when you get in the wind, He's gonna purify you. When you get in the wind, He's gonna clean you. When you get in the wind, He's gonna do what you could never do. All the invitation of heaven is to open my hands and surrender my life. Wind blow on me because when He blows on you, He purifies you. I'm, I'm reminded of uh, Robert the Bruce. He was a, a 
fact, Kath's a descendant of Robert the Bruce. <laughs> but he was a Scottish um, liberator and he fought against the King of England. Brave man. And uh, he, uh, he, they, they came after him, King Edward and his soldiers. And what they did is they confiscated his own hounds, his dogs. And with his own hounds, they hunted him. And they came after him. And he, and, he, and he ran and he ran and he ran. It was about day four and these hounds were getting closer and closer. He could hear them coming. And he heard the sound of a stream and he ran towards it. And he jumped in the stream and he went down as the river was flowing, jumping from rock, jumping, jumping down. And as he got to about 400 meters away, he heard these dogs confused, yapping, and realized they'd lost his scent. And I thought to myself for a moment, isn't that a powerful picture of purification in the gospel? You see, we're often hounded by our sin hounded by our past, hounded by our mistakes. But when we step into the river of God's finished work, into the blood of Christ, it washes us fresh. When we step in Him, we find security. When we stay close to the cross and it washes over our lives, the wind purifies you and I. Can I encourage you this morning to step in to the wind because when the wind blows, it'll purify your heart. Centers Him when it blows, it creates something in us fresh. It creates a hunger in us for His presence. It cleanses us. It gets rid of everything we can't do. It enables us to move forward. And the last one it does is it compels us. And I thought about that for a moment. You know, in Ephesians, Paul writes, he says, the love of Christ compels us. You know, to compel is to move forward. It's almost to be forced to go in a direction. I think in life we're compelled to do many things. And they often short-lived because of what initially ignites us. But Paul says, if you want your life to count, let the love of Christ compel you. You know that in 1972, NASA launched a rocket into the sky. Launched it with this purpose. It was called Pioneer 10. Launched with this purpose to go to Jupiter and send information about its magnetic fields and its moons. Pioneer 10 left on the 3rd of March, 1972. The problem with this launch and its trajectory was that as it went through, it had to go through an asteroid belt, 170 million miles wide. And in it were asteroids with the size of dust to the size of states like Alaska, moving at 720 miles an hour. How it would get through would be a miracle. But Pioneer 10 got through the other side. And not only that, it sent information, started sending information about Jupiter and its moons. But here's the amazing story, which is so surprising. Pioneer 10 hasn't come back yet. It was supposed to go for five years and it's still going. It sent back information from Saturn and places where the world has never seen. It's the most successful launch NASA's ever done in its life. And I thought to myself, that's what happens when our life is, is, is compelled by the love of Christ. It will go on and do things we never dreamt possible because of initial launch. You know what that launch was? The love of Christ in my life. What if our lives were compelled by something that wasn't natural but supernatural and would go on to tell stories for eternity? Let the love of Christ compel you and move you. But... Uh, three weeks ago, I got a phone call from a local pastor. He's a Roman Catholic priest. His name is Stephen. And he phoned me and he said, you know, I've heard about your youth that's happening on a Friday night. In fact, some of our young people are coming. He said, you know what, I, I'd, lo I'd love some help. I'd love to sit down and have a conversation with you and your youth pastor. And anyway, we organized a time. We had a coffee outside here in our foyer. And he sat down with me and we started to speak. And he said, you know, I'm here, I just want to learn more. But I have a genuine heart to see people encounter Jesus. And as I sat there, I felt the wind started to blow. I heard a story about a man who uh, grew up as a Roman Catholic, but left the church, joined a Methodist church. And one Sunday night in a youth meeting, he came to know Jesus for the first time. And he felt like God, the wind blowing, say, go back to the Catholic church. Go and build my bride. So he did that. He started as a missionary and now he finds himself in Belita. But his heart is to impact the next generation. He said, I don't mind if they come here. I don't mind what, I just want young people to know Jesus. And I sat there for a moment. I said, Steve, I said, tell me why this is. 
He said, you know, when I read about Jesus, he talked about old wineskins and new wineskins. He said, sometimes we're trying to put new wine in old wineskins, but I'm praying for a new wineskin so that new wine can flow where it hasn't flowed before. And I said, Stephen, you just tell me where to go. I'm coming with you. Here was a man who was crying over the next generation, had a heart to see. You know what that is? That's the love of Christ that compels us. And you know what he said? I asked him, I said, Stephen, what's your vision? He said, my vision is this. He didn't even blink an eye. He said, get ready, get real, get relevant. And I thought, that's coming from a friend at the Catholic Church. How much more should the love of Christ compel you and I to do what we never dreamt possible? I wanna close with this because I think when the wind blows in the spirit, there's something powerful that happens for you and I. He changes everything. Changes the way we live. Changes the way we arrive. Causes a hunger to stir in our hearts. He compels us to do what we never thought possible because of His grace. Just this last Thursday, um, I shared a birthday with my youngest daughter. She turned six, I turned 46. That's exactly 40 years difference. And you know, it's like if you share a birthday with a, with a daughter, it's her birthday. <laughs> Yours gets put, you celebrate at nine o'clock that night. But, and we celebrate with her. And you know what it's like? We were lying in bed and as that sun comes up, it's like Anna comes running through. She's on our bed. She's like, happy birthday. Where, where, are, the, where are the presents? Where are the presents? Her presents are lined up. And we go through to the kitchen and there her presents. Dad, I think, got one. She got 10. I'm joking. It's just, and she's unwrapping and she's unwrapping like this and she unwraps the last one. And the last one is a dress. It's a frozen dress. And if you know Anna, she loves to dance and she loves to put on new dresses and she opens it. She's like, wow, that's amazing. I'm, and she, she, she runs, takes her thing. She runs into her bedroom. I'm sitting on the couch with a cup of coffee and she runs back and she's dressed in a new frozen dress. She runs onto the carpet and she just starts dancing like that, dancing in front of dad, like in free. Like it's, and I just, I'm like, I'm getting my own show. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, and for a moment as I stood there, as I sat there, I realized, I felt like God said to me, you know, there are many things, you know, if there's, if there's a wind that wants us to win, there are many things we associate with winning. For some of us, it's getting a contract. For some of us, it's making a success of our lives. For some of us, it's holding up a trophy. I don't know what winning, but at that moment, I felt like I was winning. I looked at my daughter. We'd given her a gift and she was enjoying it. And I thought to myself, it brought such delight to my heart. And I thought to myself, that's just like our Father in heaven. I think He looks down and when we go out about our lives in, in, in spite of the pain, but we realize we're anointed by Him and we use what we have for His glory. It's a smile of my Father. He loves it when he sees us express who we truly are. Who you are is good enough. And he blows a spirit over your life and he says, get out there and make it count. Get out there and make a difference. And he breathes life and he loves it. Let me ask you a question. How do we honor someone that's given us a gift we don't deserve? Anna can't pay us back for that. It was a free gift. You know how you honor someone that gives you a gift? God's given you a gift. And now you honor it you use it for His glory. You take it and you use it and you smile and you enjoy life and you use it. It's not that complicated. Get out there and make it count because the wind is blowing over your life and there are people on the other side that need the gift that you have because when you arrive in the room, you change it because of who you are. God is living in you. Remember that? The wind words blow through the church, not the world. It's in your heart. Step out. I want to take a moment just to pray. And if uh, you're in this auditorium, I want to ask you to stand. If you're online, I want to ask you just to shift your position. Maybe it's just standing with me this morning, but I want to pray as we close because I believe that the Holy Spirit is here and He's with us. And He wants to remind us that although we might feel weak, we are anointed by the wind words of the Spirit. Father, I just thank You for this morning, Lord. I thank You for Your Spirit that blows, Lord. I thank You for Your love for us, God. I thank You that in a moment You can remind us of Your goodness and your grace. I thank you for the scripture in Revelation written by John that reminds us of who we are. We are more than conquerors, Lord. We've been given a new start. You cleanse our hearts. You do what we can never do. And yet you compel us to move forward. 
Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done over our lives. Let you be centered and magnified in our lives. You're the one who changes us. You're the one who breathes over us, God. I pray today, Lord, that you would breathe over people's hearts. Blow the wind of heaven, blow over our lives, God. Blow over hearts, blow over families, blow over businesses, God. I thank you that there's something new that's coming, God. It's small, but we can see it, Lord, by faith. And I thank you, God, for what you're doing in every person, Jesus. Blow, Holy Spirit, today, God. Blow in our hearts, God. Thank you for the invitation to walk with you. Thank you for the invitation to stand with you, Lord, for your glory, Jesus. We just pray this in your name. Amen and amen. Come on, church. Let's sing this together with faith in our hearts. We worship you, Jesus.